Okay, so let's read, read that out. On page six, uh, we're looking at letter, looks like X, it's actually Roman numeral 10. Uh, doing Roman numerals here on us. All right, Roman numeral 10. To divide radical expressions, we either simplify each radical, then reduce, or we rationalize the denominator by multiplying both numerator and denominator by the conjugate of the denominator, the conjugate. So let's save that conjugate for just a moment and uh, also rationalize the denominator. Because uh, on A, we actually don't have to think about either one of those. <clears throat> if we have two square roots divided, one of the rules we can use is similar to the one we did for multiply. When we had square root of A times square root of B, we can say that's the square root of A times B. You can do the same thing for divide. If you've got the square root of A divided by the square root of B, we can do the square root of A divided by B. And we're going to see that's going to help us quite a bit significantly uh, on this one. So using this little rule right here, what does this become? Yeah, the square root of 50 divided by 2 becomes the square root of 25. That's the new five, yeah. And then the square root of 25 can be square rooted to 5. All right. <laughs> so let me do one more to the side of that one if you've got room there. So what would be the square root of 90 divided by the square root of 40? Because this one, this one will be the same, but it'll, just a little different. If I go ahead and square root those together, they don't quite simplify as nicely. What can I do to 90 and 40? Reduce it by 10. I can reduce this by 10, divide each of these by 10. Take that down by 10, that's 9. Take that about down by 10, that's 4. So I wind up with the square root of 9 fourths. But, hey, square root of 9 fourths, I can do this in reverse, which is what we did, actually what we did on Monday, the other day, the first day. Uh, I can take those down by doing the square root of the top divided by the square root of the bottom. So what does that take us to then? Square root of 9, 3. Square root of four, two. Yes? yes? With me? All right. Okay. So that's sometimes what you can do. Now, B is not so nice as that. Because the top isn't a square root. And even if it was, it wouldn't do as much good. So this is where that uh, it mentioned rationalizing the denominator. That's what we need to do here. Here's what that means. Make it where the denominator doesn't have a square root in it. That's what rationalizing the dom denominator means. Make it where the denominator doesn't have a square root in it. The bottom denominator, right? So rationalizing the denominator, there's a couple of problems where that's the instruction. Rationalize the denominator. What does that mean? Make it where the denominator doesn't have a square root. And sometimes it might even be that the denominator goes away, but uh, I don't think so on this one. <clears throat> we'll see what happens. Well, how do I do this on one? We're just kind of just one thing on the bottom. <clears throat> what do I do? in such a case as that. Well, <clears throat> what I'm going to do is I'm just going to take and multiply top and bottom by the same number. And in this case, I want to multiply top and bottom by the square root of 2, because that's what's in the bottom. Okay, So I'm going to multiply the bottom by square root of 2. So to make it legal, mathematically speaking, I have to do the top by square root of 2. Why? Well, that's just multiplying it by 1, isn't it? Okay. 
So multiplying by one doesn't change it. it changes the value. It changes its appearance, but it doesn't change the value. Now what happens is, okay, so we've got, what do we have on top? Five times square root of two. Can I actually combine those? No. no, because one's in the square root, one's not. So that's just five square root of two. If that was square root of five, I could combine it. But. However, on the bottom, I've got square root of two times square root of two, square root of four. And hey, look at that. The bottom does simplify, doesn't it? Why is that the answer? My goal was to rationalize the denominator. What does that mean? Make it where the denominator doesn't have a square root. Does the denominator have a square root? No. Okay? So that's called rationalizing the denominator. And that's the goal of this particular problem. <clears throat> now let me do one more of those. It doesn't have it on here, so an addendum to B there. All right, so what we do, 10 square root of 3 over square root of 5. 10 square root of 3 over square root of 5. Again, I've got square roots on top and bottom, but combining them wouldn't help us like it did before, right? Before I had like square root of 50 over 2, square root of 2, and that simplified. That's not going to happen if I combine those, you see. So rationalize the denominator, that's the idea. So how would I do that? Top and bottom by what? Uh, five. Square root of 5. Square root of 5. And so that gets me what? What's the, what would be on top then? Wouldn't it be 10 times the square root of 15? 10 times the square root of 15. Because, yeah, you multiply the square roots together. Can't do that. And then the bottom, of course, square root of 5 times square root of 5 is square root of 25. And hey, look at that. Square root of 25, that's nice. That's fine. Now, this one does have the extra piece to it that I didn't have before because I couldn't reduce there. Why can't I reduce these? Because that, the denominator is not a square root. Not a square root, okay. Same thing as uh, times is. They're not under the square root. However, on this one, the 10 and the 5 not being in the square root, I can reduce those by 5. So it's 2 over 1. And the one's not necessary there. So two. It's just 2 square root of 15. Yep. All right. <clears throat> okay. A couple more. Oops, I meant to leave that up there. All right. Because we're going to do the same thing. Uh, we're going to rationalize it or not. not this Actually, that could be quite the same thing on a couple more of these that I'm going to do. Not this one. See, actually, um, <clears throat> points out this. Okay, so the denominator is 2. However, I can clearly see I can divide the, at least the 10 there by 2. Now, the thing is, here's the way I, I explain it. If I divide that 10 by 2, I also have to do the square root of 40 by 2. Now, let's just do that. <laughs> yeah, 10 divided by 2, that's just 5. This, though, <clears throat> on uh, the second one, square root of 40 and the 2, I can't simplify those because this 2 is not a square root. However, what can I do with square root of 40? Well, 4 times 10. So I do the square root of 4 times the square root of 10. And so that's going to become 2 square root of 10 over 2. And hey, look at that. The 2's do cancel. So you wind up with 5 plus 10, square root of 10. So yeah, so if you have a fraction like that, yeah, divide both of them by 2 and then see, see how you can simplify it. Sometimes it simplifies, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it really did. All right, <clears throat> so D. D brings up the second rationalize the denominator type we finish off with here. So we've got 1 plus square root of 3 over 2 minus square root of 3. All right. <clears throat> Thank you.
Okay, so this is another one where it'll say rationalize the denominator. I want to make it where the denominator doesn't have a square root in it. However, this one's different than the previous one where the previous one I just multiplied by the square root of 3. Well, multiplying by the square root of 3 would not get rid of the square root of 3 because, well, that would still have the square root of 3. So this is where he mentions the conjugate. <clears throat> and he said the conjugate is, um, if you have a plus bx, the conjugate is um, a minus bx. And it works vice versa. If it's a minus bx, the conjugate is a plus bx. So in that case, what you see for plus or minus <coughs> binomials like that, you just change the sign, sign in the middle. Just change the sign in the middle. So if it was a plus, change it to a minus for the conjugate. So here, I'm going to multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. And we'll see if that's going to do what we want it to do. So beside that one, let's write the conjugate of the denominator. What would be the conjugate of this denominator? Two plus the square, Two plus the square root of three. So I have to do that on top and bottom. And so this one's going to be a little bit longer because notice what I have to do to the top and the bottom. Foil, yes. Foil the top, foil the bottom. So <clears throat> we've done that a couple of times now. So the top uh, foil, so you do 2 times 1, 2, 1 times square root of 3, square root of 3. Square root of 3 times 2 is 2 square root of 3. If you can't combine those. And then square root of 3 times square root of 3 is square root of 9. So that's the foil of the top and the foil of the bottom. Actually works out a little bit nicer. So you got four, 2 times 2 is 4. Uh, <clears throat> 2 times square root of 3 is plus 2 square root of 3. And you got minus square root of 3 times 2. So that's minus 2 square root of 3. And then square root of 3 minus times square root of 3 positive is minus square root of 9. I know that went that quick, but you're just foiling at the end. So you get those four terms. Now on the top, what can I do? Well, that's 2. And then aren't these like radicals? I got 1 square root of 3, 2 square root of 3. So radicals, you add the parts on the outside, and then the radical stays the same. And then this square root of 9 becomes just 3. So it, it simplifies pretty nicely. We have, you know, combine the 5 and 3 for the next step. But the bottom does a whole lot nicer, doesn't it? Yeah. This is one of the ones where we get some canceling, isn't it? Yeah. The 2 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 3 so gone. It'll be 4. 4 minus 9 square root. 9 square root, which is 3. Yeah. 4 minus 3. And so <laughs> finish it off. Yeah, you do 2 plus 3, that's 5. And then the bottom is just 1. And so that is not necessary to write. And again, can I add the 5 and the 3 here? No. no. It's not a square root of 3, is it? No. Hang with me, do one more of these just to get you one more example. It's not on there, but <clears throat> I think one more we seal the deal here. All right. So let's say we've got 6 plus the square root of 5 divided by 3 plus the square root of 5. So we take that. <clears throat> I'm going to write a second one. And just multiply by the conjugate of the denominator. So in this case, we've got plus, so the conjugate is minus. It's just the opposite of what it is originally. And then I do the same thing on the top. Uh, <coughs> it's the conjugate of the denominator, so the top and the bottom there match. All right, so let's foil once again all that out. See what happens. So the top one, foil it out six times. 3 is 18. 6 times minus square root of 5 is minus 6 square root of 5. 
Square root of 5 times 3 is 3 square root of 5. But you can't really multiply those. And then 5 uh, sorry, square root of 5 times minus square root of 5 minus the square root of 25. But you can't multiply those. The bottom, like I said, nicer things happen because you got 3 times 3 is 9. You got minus 3 square root of 5 for the outer, positive 3 square root of 5 for the inner. And then minus square root of 25 again. Yeah, and so <laughs> that's what's good. That's why you multiply by conjugate, because the middle terms are going to drop out. <clears throat> so on the top, what have we got? 18. Combine the two in the middle. You got minus 3 square root of 5, minus 5. And you got 9 minus 5, which is on the bottom. And I mentioned this one because, what do we got? 13 minus 3 square root of 5, and that's over 4. Okay? That's a pretty good answer because if this was going to simplify further, I would divide. So you could, here's the other alternative answer. 13 divided by 4 minus 3 square root of 5 divided by 4. But that doesn't simplify any. So I'm okay with either one of those. Either one of those. 